I'm looking at audio today. Looking at audio, listening to audio, working with audio. Working with audio today. And uh, specifically, audio from lav mics, uh, or indeed the lav mics that I use, which are the uh, Sennheiser EW100 sort of ones, uh, quite commonly used. And I'm just going to talk you through the process that I would go th um, go through to EQ them and uh, limit them, and just basically get them to a standard that I would eventually, you know, put out or use. So first of all, we've only got the lav mic in one track here. So this is 002, so I'm going to right click on here to modify and go straight to audio channels. And the lav mic is in the right channel, so I want the left mic left to be the right. And then we just get the two dual monoed across both tracks, uh, uh, both channels, left and right. In this video, we specifically look at the requirements. Okay, so these lav mics are actually, they sound pretty good straight off, but they do need a bit of EQing, less so actually with Kate here because she's got quite a sibilant voice, or female voice is quite sibilant anyway, and so we don't necessarily need quite so much EQing on them, but I'm going to basically do the same as I would if it was, uh, you know, a, a audio track that I would use. First thing I would do is put, yeah, put some EQ on them of some kind, and I'd do that as I went through in the VST video. I'd do that in the mixer. I wouldn't really necessarily do it on the individual clip, so I'm going to dedicate track one here to doing this, and I'm going to put in my uh, VST plugin here, and for this I'm going to use the T-Rex VST plugins, but you don't have to, and I will show you also how to do this using just Premiere stuff. And the second thing I'm going to add is the brick wall limiter. So go back to VST and add in a brick wall limiter. So what a brick wall limiter does is it will look at a clip and it will have some element of look ahead or a very, very quick attack time anyway. And it will compress or limit the levels if they hit a certain point. So it is kind of like a compressor, but depending on how you use it, it doesn't necessarily have that compressed sound to it because it acts so, so quickly. You don't necessarily notice it happening. And uh, really, you can get a kind of uh, version of normalization. The problem with normalizing a clip, so if I just right click on here, it's not too bad because we haven't got any extremes. But if you've got an extreme, like someone knocks the microphone or just like she taps her coat or something like that, you've got an extreme in there. So normalize will only look at that extreme and go, ah, right, that's the peak. I'm going to the rest might even drop in volume as a result of it. Or, you know, if you if the peak is at 0 dB and you say you want to normalize to minus 1, it'll drop that peak to minus 1 and the whole rest of the clip will go down 1 dB, which is not what you want at all. The benefit of a brick wall limiter is that you can increase the gain of the clip overall and it dynamically changes as the audio level moves along. And I'll show you that in a second. Right, so let's go into here, and I mentioned previously you can't see this while I'm editing it, so um, I would generally um, put some high frequency on here, so I'd, this is, highest this will go is 8.3k, but it, it shoves um, a um, shelved EQ at 8.3k, so that's good enough. Let's just play the clip again. I'm going to mute it while I play it, actually, uh, but you can still... S so I'm just going to put about 5 dB are around this, so you've got a shelved EQ here at 5 dB. I'm also going to put some mid on around the vocal area of about about around about sort of 2 kilohertz and just about 3 dB around there. It does make a difference. Uh, these are a little bit low on the sort of deeper bass, so again I'm going to go into the low section. I'm going to drop this down to maybe 80 hertz. <clears throat> Let me just go back and uh, add in maybe a few dB at 80 hertz. So just a real sort of nothing major. It doesn't necessarily need anything major. If this was my voice, I would probably add another couple of dB to here. So they might push this up to um, 8 dB, but I think that would probably be too much for Kate. So let's just take a listen to how that sounds at the moment. This video, we specifically look at the requirements when you spend under 25,000. Nice bit of lag there. Let's just disable high quality and reduce it to half pounds. If you're involved in anything above 25. Okay, so the level, as you can see on the right here, and it's definitely a good idea to get your level meters, expand them out so you can actually see what's going on here. Thousand pounds. You'll need to attack. Right, you can see that nothing really goes above minus eight dB. 
in most cases, you would probably want that to be in the region of about minus one, minus two. Now, of course, minus eight is great for the recorded track because it gives you plenty of headroom. It's unlikely that anything's going to clip here. So level-wise, to me, this is perfect. I wouldn't want to record anything differently than this. But as far as my actual final output is concerned, I want it a little bit different. So, and I think, yes, I have put in the brick wall limit a second. Now, I would always advise in line, if you're going to, because they, they do get acted on in a sort of step-by-step -step fashion, and I would always advise putting the brick wall limiter in second because, of course, the output from the EQ'd section is higher or could be higher. Uh, so you really want to take the output of the EQ and then brick wall limit that so that if any, if there are any kind of harsh sibilance bits that come off the EQ, it'll take take care of those and control those appropriately. Right. So, firstly, my output ceiling, as it's called in these in this version, well, that's just basically your final out. I'm going to set that to minus one dB. And the one day workshop. Please contact either learning and development. And the reason I want that minus one dB and not zero dB is because when you compress audio, there's something called peak overshoot. And uh, peak overshoot means that the compression algorithm can't quite deal with peaks as perfectly as you would imagine it should. So if you have a WAV file and it peaks perfectly at zero dB and never any higher, you'll probably find that if you compress that to uh, um, an MP3, it'll sometimes peak over and you'll actually get a clip on the final output. So to take care of that, I always give myself a little bit of headroom in the output to minus one dB. Now the input, uh, so this is basically the gain of what I'm going to shove into this, I want this to be probably around about 8 dB because that's what we are below here. Let's just move this out of the way. And so I have my track here and I'm going to play this again because it'll, if I, even if I mute this, I don't want to sort of just have the voice going over it all the time. Uh, if I mute this, you'll still see the levels coming into here, which is good. So you can see the levels coming in fairly low, minus 10, minus 9. So if I increase this now to it's kind of minus 8 ish. All right, so I'm getting no gain reduction on here at all. So this, the limiter is basically having to do nothing, which means that I could probably shove it up a little bit more. So let's put this up to 10 dB. Okay, now we're getting occasional glitches into get into the gain, into the limiter actually having to do something. And they're only quite minor, so that's probably ideal. Because otherwise, if you take it up too high, it becomes a compressor and you start really pumping the audio so you know the, the the bits in between will really sound much much sort of like you'll get the horrible pumping effect where she stops talking and the background comes up very very quickly because the release time on this is 10 milliseconds uh, attack time of 0 0.05 milliseconds so um, you don't want that to happen so just do it so it's just getting a bit of gain reduction not even much on there is there Maybe 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 eleven dB. Okay, now see what. Let's have a listen and see what difference that makes to the audio itself on the final out. If you're involved in anything above twenty five thousand pounds, you'll need to attend a one day workshop. Please contact either the learning and development team or the procurement team to find out more about this course. And you notice there that the birds in the background after she stops talking. There's no crazy increase in volume so and that's exactly how you want it to be uh, it's a really nice clean limit on the level so we've now got a dynamically normalized uh, limit to the track and uh, and also some eq on it and that's pretty much all i would ever do on a, on a lav mic tri track just a bit of eq bit of limiting job done so there you go now how would you do that in premiere well there are, there are, there are probably a couple of options actually but there is a specific hard limiter here which you can see I've already selected so it's so I'm going to put the EQ on first and I would make it just a simple 10 band EQ don't need anything amazing let me 30 bands for this and amplitude and compression hard limiter same idea let's edit this one and we've just got a nice basic EQ so you can do the same thing here just really easily shove this up around the 8k mark so just a sort of shelved EQ at the end maybe and around 2k a little bit and around 1k maybe a bit as well and then some around the sort of deeper the deeper base here so maybe hopefully that'll sound similar if you're involved in anything above 20 fine and now our hard limiter 
Well, this is a similar idea. We've got our maximum amplitude, which I'm going to set to minus one. Input boost, as they call it, that's our gain. That's our input gain. So let's set that to, what did we set it to in the last one? 11 dB. Let's set, to set it to 10 initially. Now this has a look ahead. So this is actually looking ahead in the clip to see what's going to happen. So it can really quickly act on any of those limits. So you get absolutely no chance of anything breaking through and peaking and clipping. Uh, and the release time is 100 milliseconds, which I think is too slow for what I'm trying to achieve here. I want this to be really, really quick. So I'm going to drop that down to its lowest point, which is 40 milliseconds. And let's have a listen to how that sounds. £25,000, you'll need to attend a one-day workshop. Please contact either the learning and development team or the procurement team. To yeah, and that's okay. You don't get any visuals here. That's the only problem. You don't get visuals here of what's actually um, happening. So you can't see as well as you can with a kind of dedicated VST plugin that's sort of designed for this sort of thing. You can't see it as well, but it does the job, you know. you can. It's maybe a little bit more aggressive sounding. Find out more about this course. But you can take that down a bit. I mean, just take the gain down a bit and, you know, tolerate it being a little bit lower. One day workshop please contact. Fine. So that's how you would do it in Premiere, just using the EQ and the hard limiter. I don't think these are always that well used in Premiere audio stuff. I think people tend to stick to the visual stuff and even then they often use plugins. But uh, that's how I would deal with lav mics and that's all I ever do on lav mics and I find that that gets them sounding pretty good. So hopefully that's useful to you. Thank you for watching and if you like the channel please subscribe. Catch you soon. Bye.